Hey, what's up guys? Mr. Lickie here. Today, we're going to talk about measurement. The first thing I want to talk about today is what exactly is measurement and how do we measure something? I know you guys are all thinking, of course I know how to measure something. You just take your ruler and you stick it down and you figure out how long it is. Yes, you are 100% correct about that. But we need to make sure when we're using our ruler that we pay close attention to where is the zero line. On some rulers, the line of the zero is right at the very end of the ruler. For example, this one, you can see, if I show it, I'm not sure if you can, but the line of the zero is right at the very end. So the very next part over is our first measure. Some rulers, they have a little space at the end, so you got to kind of line up that zero if you want to get a precise measurement. Now, you're looking at your ruler, you're thinking, what are all those little lines on there? Those little lines are millimeters and centimeters. If you got one that's this big, you've got all three of the units of measure that we're going to be talking about today. We've got the itty bitty little lines, those are millimeters. The ones that have on their numbers, those are all counting up in fives of centimeters. And then the whole stick is a meter stick. So we've got everything from millimeters to centimeters to meters in this unit of measure right here. The next thing that I'm going to talk about is a referent. Now, a referent kind of sounds like the word refer. And we're using a referent to refer to or estimate a measure. Now, what does that mean? Well, if you think about a dime, the width of a dime is very, very skinny. Okay, it's not very wide at all, but that width is actually about the width of a millimeter. So if you were gonna estimate how many millimeters something is, you could take a dime and you could like plink it along and kind of estimate how long that thing is in the measurement of millimeters. Now, remember, an estimate doesn't have to be exact. It's just giving you a ballpark figure of how big or whatever it is that you're estimating, okay? Now, let's talk about a referent that I can use for centimeters. If I wanted to estimate how long something is in centimeters, I could use my pinky finger. The width of my pinky finger is about the length of a centimeter. Okay, it might not be exactly. Some people might have really skinny fingers that are just a little bit shorter than a, a centimeter. And some people might have big fat sausage fingers that are a little bit bigger than a centimeter. But again, an estimation is just trying to get close to what it actually is. So if you use your pinky finger and kind of blot along whatever it is you wanted to measure, you could get a good estimate of how long that thing is in centimeters. Now, a meter is a little bit trickier because it's hard to kind of guess, uh, it's about this long or this long or it's as long as my arm. But one way that you could think about it is if you think about the width of a door, you have to imagine that in your head, but the width of a door is almost exactly a meter, most doors, okay? Again, you could have a door that's a little bit long, a little bit wider or a little bit narrower, but again, it's an estimate. And if you think about the width of a door, somewhere around this so we can walk through comfortably, okay, you're looking at a good referent for the length of a meter. The next thing I want to talk about is how do each unit of measure compare to each other? Because we can report the same length in each of the different units. Something could be one millimeter, and then we're going to find out how big that is in centimeters and how many meters that also is, okay? So let's look what I have written over here. One centimeter, remember the referent about the width of your pinky finger, is equal to 10 millimeters, okay? One meter, that big long meter stick, has 100 centimeters in there. And if I wanted to look at that meter in terms of millimeters, the meter is a thousand millimeters. Let's look at a couple more examples. One millimeter is actually one tenth of a centimeter. Now, I need you to go back in your memory Rolodex and think about fractions and decimals. We made fractions into decimals. 
that were over a denominator of 10, 100, or 1,000. Now, that's going to come in super handy here because if you look at what I have here, we've got one millimeter equals one tenth of a centimeter. So we know that one over 10 is zero decimal one. So one millimeter is actually the exact same thing as zero decimal one centimeter. We talked about the fact that in one meter, there's a hundred centimeters. Now remember, as fractions and decimals, the bottom number is the total amount of pieces that are in that hole. So there's a total amount of 100 centimeters in one meter. Now, one centimeter is gonna be one over 100 meters, okay? And that's gonna equal one over 100. We've got two zeros here, so we know we're in the hundreds place. Also, that's 100, so that makes perfect sense. Zero decimal, zero one meters. One centimeter is zero decimal, zero one meters, okay? Now, here's a really big one. The one millimeter going into that whole meter stick. If I look at this meter stick and I'm thinking, well, how many meters is one millimeter? Well, the answer to that is right here. One millimeter equals one over a thousand meters because we said that there's a thousand millimeters in one meter. If there's a thousand millimeters in one meter, one millimeter is one over a thousand meters. And we know that the thousandth place, thousandth place is three decimal places away from the decimal. So one millimeter is equal to zero decimal zero zero one meter. You may be asking yourself at this point, why do we want to know what one millimeter is in meters. Well, a good thing to think about in terms of measurement is the more decimal places that you have, the more precise your, measure, measure, your measurement is going to be. Let's say, for example, I have a crayon that's six centimeters above, okay? Now, if I measure that using the millimeters and the decimals, I could find out that maybe it's actually 6.2 centimeters. That 0.2 is actually going to be two millimeters, okay? Because we know that one millimeter is 0 0.1 centimeters. So when we're using the decimal places in measurement and converting between all of these different units of measure, what we're really doing is adding precision to our measurements. The more precise, the more decimal places. The more decimal places, the more precise. Because we can take those little numbers and turn them into big numbers, okay? Let's review. Today we talked about measuring length. We talked about millimeters, centimeters, and meters. Let's check that box off. The unit of measure for millimeters is a small mm, lowercase. The unit for centimeters is a lowercase cm, and the unit for meters is a lowercase m. We also talked about what is a referent. A referent is a way for us to estimate a unit of measure. That is, we could estimate a millimeter by using the width of a dime. We could estimate centimeters by using the width of our pinky finger. And we could estimate a meter by imagining the width of a door frame. We also talked about converting the measurement units between each other. One centimeter equals 10 millimeters, one millimeter is 100 centimeters, and so on. We've got all these, you can look back on the video and check for yourself if you need to remember, but it's good to know how to convert because we also use that in terms of making more precise measurements. Great job today, guys.